Hello and welcome to the Templum Digital Assets Report. I'm blockchain global news anchor Patricia Wu, along with my co-host, co-founder of Templum, Vincent Molinari. Now we're here at the New York Stock Exchange, but Vince just got back from DC. Big sigh of relief, the government is back open. How does this affect the digital assets blockchain legislation? Yeah, Patricia, we think it affects it in a big way. The great sense I had coming out of Washington was a willingness for both parties to work together when we're talking about digital assets, when we're talking even about cryptocurrency, of how do we bring this to the forefront? How do we have better regulation? How do we have clarity? And I think that's reflected even today uh, as we see momentum. Uh, Congressman McHenry putting forward a letter to Chair Waters just last week to work together for uh, calling for hearings and discussing how fintech regulation can be advanced. And also, very timely, there are two new bills. Absolutely. So uh, if I run down them very quickly, H.R. 56, the Financial Technology Protection uh, Act by uh, Congressman Budd, and uh, Congressman uh, Lynch. Now when you look at that, it's really looking at how do we move these levels of technology uh, guardrails to not have illicit activity uh, being conducted. And I think that's something both parties can um, agree on. So uh, kind of hopeful that that one advances through the House pretty quickly. Um, and then we have H.R. 502, which is a reintrodu reintroduction of the Fine Trafficking Act, which is really focusing on how do we examine cryptocurrency and crypto marketplaces uh, that are being used for either terrorism or sex trafficking. So again, another rallying point that I think both parties can get around. So this could be a pathway to bipartisanship, fingers crossed. No. Let's keep the government open in the process. Exactly. So we're still in the infancy of all of this. And from what I hear, I mean, the potential is limitless. What could the end game look like in terms of, you know, increased access to liquidity, solving market inefficiencies, and then the impact on the economy as a whole? I, I think it could be massive. And when we look at new market infrastructure, standardization, best practice, once we get clarity from regulators with the help of legislators, tremendous inflow of capital, particularly waiting institutionally, that can advance job creation, economic growth. So we're quite excited about it. Our guest today is Xiao Tinzong, the president of FinTech for Good, a global FinTech and blockchain network. Welcome, Shelton. I Thank love you. that name. Tell us about your company. Sure. Uh, Fintech for Good is a global network that through our investment uh, uh, advisory media education program that we connect uh, the blockchain startup with investors, uh, with uh, thought leaders uh, and also with the policy makers. Our overall mission is to help to scale uh, 100 blockchain and fintech company within two years and helping them uh, using their solution to address global sustainable development goals. Shazan, you know, we, we met going back to the UN and our mutual work and clearly you referenced the sustainable development goals. Really important and, and, and clearly the name reflects a, a focus on doing good. Uh, with the companies that you work with, how many would you say have a focus on impact, um, having a metric aside from the traditional rate of return? Yeah, majority of the company that we work with is with the impact focus. And uh, the reason is very simple that uh, uh, company with the impact focus uh, face more challenge to just communicate uh, that angle uh, to the investors. And uh, through our work, that uh, we help them to basically uh, to help the investor understand uh, they will not only bring the financial return, but also bring the uh, environmental and the social return. And I give a few examples. Uh, one of the company is uh, Vody and as a microtasking uh, platform and uh, then through their uh, new technology that's uh, a marginalized group can really just uh, uh, get uh, re uh, receive payment through completing micro digital task in this is being tested in Vietnam and uh, another you know company as uh, you know blockchain based peer to peer peer to peer energy company and through their work that uh, you know it can address a lot of uh, renewable energy curtail problem in many developing countries and i can give a lot of uh, examples like that and uh, through our work that we help them to not only uh, 
bring new capital into their existing practice, but also just to help them to just to, uh, come up with the story which uh, the investors and also government officials understand the potential impact that they can bring to the economy. Great, and are you able to measure those KPIs mm -hmm. of those results along what you're doing? Yeah, and uh, we mainly just uh, use uh, uh, United Nations SDG as our overall framework and uh, from the 17 goals uh, and uh, 169 uh, targets that's uh, we basically convert that into our investment uh, uh, philosophy or and also methodology and uh, as of now that's uh, we look at we use uh, five indicators to capture that's uh, how much that uh, uh, we help them to just uh, uh, bring that impact to the world, and which include uh, you know three main targets. We call them responsible innovation uh, framework, and which include uh, green and uh, uh, impact, and also innovation. From the green, that is about the mitigation and adaptation. For the impact side, it's about the social and even environmental return. And for the innovation, that's a frontier and, uh, and adaptive innovation. So as I listen to you, as you really try to nurture these startups, you have many different initiatives. And one of them is the Digital X100 Acceleration Program. So tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. And in the blockchain, the fintech space, that uh, startups face a lot of a challenge. And, uh, but they, many of them already you know, have a, a minimum uh, uh, product uh, ready to be launched. But then they are in lack of uh, capital. They are in lack of market entry expertise. They also are in lack of uh, the potential advisory service uh, you know, being provided by the in, in, industry experts through a two-week, uh, sorry, two-month uh, acceleration program that we help the top 10 most impactful blockchain fintech company to just uh, meet their own target. And uh, for this program, something special we designed is called uh, uh, the Global Fellowship Program. And for each startup, we match them with three interns that we pre-trained. And then this intern, these interns will work with them in this three, uh, two months, and then to just uh, you know do research and uh, many other pro uh, 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 work. And in this, that not only that they helped uh, the company to reach their goal, uh, but also that uh, the interns as the students uh, who also get the first-hand experience working with the, the leading technology companies. Shazan, in that process when they're graduating from the accelerator program, do they have access to capital? Do you help them be able to grow and execute on that business plan? Yeah, and uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, for the acceleration program, that's, uh, we have our own, our own fund dedicated to the uh, acceleration program. We also have a network of uh, investment funds who are looking at uh, the, our startups uh, graduating from the, the acceleration program. And as of, you know, comparing with last year, 2018, that we received uh, uh, around 200 applications from one of our acceleration program. And then we selected uh, around 15 companies through this, uh, you know, we call the Asian uh, Blockchain Acceleration Week brought them directly to China and uh, also to uh, Korea and then they were not only uh, be able to talk to uh, meet with the investor in uh, face to face but also just uh, identifying the partners who they can partner with in those markets immediately within you know very short period of time then they can assess uh, their market entry strategy and also find the right partner to just uh, build their plan there. And speaking of China, you just recently completed the China Top 10 Blockchain Innovations. That's exciting. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, this is a global series that, you know, we are identifying the uh, global top 10 blockchain startups uh, or innovations in 2018. And uh, the phase one of that is uh, the China Top 10 uh, Blockchain Innovation uh, in 2018. And, uh, we got uh, around uh, you know, uh, 10 uh, blockchain leaders uh, in the space. Uh, each one of them, them nominated three companies. And uh, then uh, we invited the public uh, to vote uh, for the top 10 from this uh, top 30. 
and uh, within half a month, we got uh, 1.4 million people who got involved into wow. this. And now that uh, we have our, our China top 10 uh, already selected, and which include uh, you know from the public ledger to the most influential blockchain application in the financial service, energy, and many other sectors. And the next week, that uh, we'll just have the communication out, and uh, the top three out of this top 10 will join the other 27 uh, blockchain innovations uh, from other uh, nine countries to compete for the top 10 uh, blockchain innovation in 2018 globally. Well, so you're truly moving this on scale uh, it, it, within, what is that, 10, 11, 12 countries? Uh, yes, yeah. Th that, that's really, that, that is truly uh, epic in size and how quickly you move. When do the results come? When do you find out who the ultimate winner is? Yeah. And uh, so we'll announce the China top 10 uh, in the week of February 5th. And uh, in April, that's we'll organize uh, the uh, China, uh, sorry, the, the, the Blockchain Disruptor Summit uh, in uh, Seoul, Korea. And there that we'll announce uh, our, uh, the global top 10. In addition to that, uh, that in, during the New York uh, Blockchain Week uh, in May, that we'll also organize our Responsible Blockchain Summit uh, in New York. And there that uh, many of the uh, leaders who are involved in this space will celebrate together with our global top 10 and also country-specific top 10 in New York. Now China is one of the largest investors in the blockchain space. How does the government treat this space? Uh, the gun, blockchain is uh, definitely a, a very important area of focus for the China government. Uh, and just, uh, you know, uh, the year before that uh, China has already included the blockchain in the China's uh, five-year economic development plan. And uh, after that, it was uh, translated into sector-specific five-year plan. So, each of the ministers now have a blockchain mandate. And so this, this, this is why that you can see blockchain is being promoted not only at the national level, but also at the uh, local level. And uh, in, in addition to the policy incentive, we also see that uh, many of the local governments uh, have uh, just uh, partnered with the private sector to launch uh, large-scale blockchain investment fund. And uh, especially, you know, in Hangzhou, uh, in Hangzhou city, in Wuhan city, all those funds are at a billion dollar in scale. And uh, China has been the, you know, within the, the top three blockchain investors uh, in the past few years. And uh, uh, from the patent side, that's uh, in the past two years, the China has uh, published more than uh, two, uh, 400 patents, which make China as the number one pay, uh, blockchain patent owner's country. And which, uh, you know, next to that is uh, US and Australia, which has around 100 patents and 40 patents. And of course, you know, uh, China is really promoting blockchain-based technology, you know, innovation. But from the investment side or blockchain-based fundraising side, that uh, Chinese government is very cautious. And uh, you can see that uh, the ban of ICO and also the more conservative uh, uh, message toward uh, STO have sent a signal that China definitely want to protect investors from the blockchain-based fraud. So we certainly covered a lot of ground here today. Thank you so much for that, Shelton. Thank you. And for more information about FinTech for Good, you can go to their website at fintechforgood.com. That will do it for this edition of the Templum Digital Assets Report. And if you want more information, you can always check out our social media pages. And we'll see you back here next week, same time, same place.